Hi, my name is Day9, and I'm from the Day9 Daily, where we learn to be a better gamer. Ordinarily, I do the analysis of regular StarCraft II 1v1 matches, but Heart of the Swarm is coming up soon. So I'm here at Blizzard Entertainment, and I present to you the following battle report where I get to cast with the sexy Rob Simpson. Hope you enjoy. Hello, my name is Sean Day9 Plot from Day9 TV. And I'm Rob Simpson from Blizzard Entertainment, and today we are going to be watching a very special StarCraft II match from Heart of the Swarm. Now, it is important to note that this is a development build of the game, so all of the balance and all of the units that you see here are not necessarily final. But we still get the chance to see those sick new units in action and how the strategies of old collide with the strategies of new. We have a Zerg versus Terran, and let's take a look at the map at the start. We have the natural expansion right outside the front with a pretty wide choke leading to a third base. And then right after that here on Howling Peaks, you're going to see that it actually moves into a relatively open center of the map mm -hmm. as well. There's lots of really big wide open areas to take advantage of all those new units. The Zelnaga Tower here to check out the back door entrance to see if there's any sneak attacks. And this collapsible rock tower is an interesting formation. If you destroy it, it closes that path that has a little bit of rubble. The exact opposite of destructible rocks. Now, once those rocks do fall over, they will turn into destructible rocks, so it is possible to open that pathway mm -hmm. once again, should you so choose. And we're seeing the back door entrance to the natural expansion leading all the way up to the Terran base. The basics of this map would be a big map with a lot of different attack paths and no real clear focus on the center. You can easily swing around to all the backsides. Right, that's right. On this map, you are going to have to be sure to have eyes on all sides of your army. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, at this point, it's significant to note that the new units tend to be pretty late on. The Terran is largely factory-based. The Zerg has some late-layer tech, but mainly new hive tech. So in other words, the opening stage of the game is going to look a lot like Wings of Liberty. That's right, and here we can see the Zerg player already laying down his expansion down at his natural. Nothing's going to be quite different. Obviously, we don't uh -huh. see him rushing gas or going for any sort of new crazy tech. Yeah, and likewise, down in the Terran base, we're seeing a pretty standard barracks followed by gas opening. Uh, it looks like the Zerg did throw down some extra drones before throwing down the pool. So this is a way to get a little bit more economy before you start building those units. Can consider to be somewhat of a risk unless you are baller enough to hold off all that early pressure with drones. And now back over here on the Terran side, we do see that he has just about finished up that oh, tech lab. And his orbital command is also just about to wrap up as well. Now, he's over opening with a Reaper. Yeah, you know, the Reaper expand is a really common play. You get the Reaper out very early. It takes a lot of gas, but not really any minerals. So you'll start to see that Terran money skyrocket so we can expand soon enough. And now this new feature for the Reaper is that they can research the combat drugs upgrade. This uh -huh. enables them to regenerate their health when they're out of combat, further oh. increasing their harassment viability. And there it is oh. going down. So now the Reaper has the ability to pop in, do a little bit of damage. Those queens with their extra range can start to pick them off a little bit too easily unless you get that combat drugs upgrade in there. The Reaper has picked off the drone. A second gas geyser has gone down and there is Reaper number two coming out. So it looks like an aggressive opening from the Terran. That's right. And so as we see the Terran player now start to move that Reaper across the map, you can see that the Zerg player is moving along very standard, yeah, as yeah. we've seen before, always going for double queens because you still want to keep up on all of that larva production. Yeah, there's no big drastic change where suddenly <laughs> Zerg don't value larva and expanding. Zerg is always Zerg, but always has to worry about this exact kind of threat. There's the queen starting to pick off that Reaper. Reaper is going to pop out of battle, and Ooh. we see combat drugs is almost finished at just needs a few extra seconds, but in the production tab in the top left, you will see that extra command center going down, and you can hear that healing noise on the Reaper as it mm -hmm. pops back up to maximum health again. That's right. Now, fortunately enough for him, just as that Reaper hit the out-of-combat phase, he was now able to heal all the way back up to full HP and is ready to get in once again. Here we see him jumping up the cliffs, 
as oh. he so often does. And now moving around to potentially, oh no, that queen denies it. Now you'll notice that the Reapers no longer have an anti-building fire. That is true, they have to rely just on that regular fire, which is still more than enough to pick off those drones. And we see it looks like Terran has to be careful. That Reaper is getting very low on life, but still will be able to pop out. And I even like that juke Terran did where he hopped up on the low ground and hopped back down just to make sure that there was nothing there to kill him off. And so once again, we can see the Reapers falling back as they wait to heal up. And another Reaper joins into the force. Ooh, three really is the money number. You can kill drones in one shot with all three of them. So now, while the Terran's doing all this, you can see down on the mini-map, Terran has taken an expansion, and Zerg is still just scrambling to make sure that he can deflect this type of onslaught. Well, now, fortunately enough for the Zerg player, he is already repositioned with those queens down at the natural, because otherwise he would have easily been able to swing around there and harass those drones. Now, at this point in time, Zerg is playing in a very normal Zergy way from Wings of the Liberty, just making queens, getting that third hatchery up very early that you see down right there. Huge focus on Larva, very much so a Dong Ray Goo style of Zerg vs. Terran. That's right, because as always, getting your macro as strong as possible early in the game is obviously going to pay off. And now we have the Reapers moving around oh. and one-shotting those drones just left and right. The Queens are a little late to the party. Oh, one of the Reapers go down. Will the other two be able to escape? No, one more goes down as well. And the unscathed Reaper makes it out just barely. And even though it looks like Terran might oh. end up losing all these Reapers, did a huge amount of drone damage. And whoa, ho, 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 drones not quite swift enough to pick off that one Reaper. And at this point in time, though Terran lost those Reapers, he got the chance to see absolutely everything everything going on in the Zerg's base. And now, at this point, at the eight minute mark in the game, we see the brand new unit in production, the Widow Mine. Oh man, and these Widow Mines are such a valuable asset to the Terran Force. Looks like we will get the chance to see the Widow Mines moving through the center of the map. And I mean, as you're talking about, Rob, the Widow Mine it really helps shut down attack pathways. Yes. These Widow Mines are like manually controlled spider mines from StarCraft One. You burrow them, and when a nearby unit pops up, you can see that radius where they will attach on, and 10 seconds later, detonate, killing everything nearby. That's right. So the Widow Mine is a great interim solution until you're able to establish that space control with your siege mode on your tank. So now we can actually see the oh, Reaper. Oh, oh, it's looking like oh. he's trying to bait out the Queens. The Queens oh, are getting no. just a little too close. And there, it's been nabbed, and it looks like 10 seconds will pass before that one Queen detonates. And oh, the other Queen got nabbed too. And see oh. you later, Queen 1, as they continue to try to add creep. They too will go down. So oh, very man. nice emergency creep spread with 10 seconds left to live. Right, just trying to get any additional mileage out of the screens that they possibly can. And now we can see that the Zerg player has just double expanded, moving on to both his third and his fourth base. And the Terran player starting to scan to retake his control of the map, but unable to kill those creep tumors in time. And in the meantime, I'd like to note that the Widow Mine is produced out of the regular old factory, so mm -hmm. Reactor Factory can produce them two at a time. That's right, and they only cost 75 minerals and 25 gas, so relatively cheap. And they're also cheap on the supply count as well, only requiring one. Yeah, that's a huge step up from the Hellions that required two. You can get them out quickly because they build fast, but man, do they force you to make a lot of supply depots. Now the Terran player is staying active on the map with his Reapers. And now back over here in the Terran base, he's now starting to move out for his third. And now we can see the Hellions. Oh, they wow. were just in their battle mode and have now switched back into Hellion mode to move across the map faster. Now when they're in battle mode, they have 50% extra HP. And they also fire in that wide cone. They're a lot better in direct engagements, but the good old classic Wings of Liberty Hellions, still excellent for these harassment maneuvers. Being able to pick off all these units, he has to be careful. There's the Zerglings now surrounding. Oh, a great surround on that creep. I really think Terran might have to go switch into battle mode to engage those Zerglings effectively. Oh, wow, that would certainly help him if he's going to stay out there. But, oh, it's looked like he's been deterred enough to fall back into the third base. And now we can actually see another new Zerg unit being created in the production tab. Swarm Host is one of the new Zerg units, burrows under the ground and unleashes Locus one at a time, very much so like Broodlords launch the Broodlings. And we see that research up there allows those Locusts to live a little bit longer. And wow, a really fast hive tech really to make use of those brand new Swarm units. And now we can see, once again, Terran players staying very active with those Hellions and moving up into that third base. Oh, just as the spine crawler finishes, but the pre-igniter upgrade is Ooh. finished, and he is just frying those drones. They don't even need to be lining up. And it looks like he will just roast as many drones as he can anyways. 
A lot of economic damage done to that top left expansion. Queen's spines still have very long range. Looks like these Hellions will be deflected. Finally get picked off, but I mean, as you can see, the big theme of Terran is that with all those new factory units, the Widow Mine, the Battle Mode Hellion, and of course the Warhound that we have not gotten the chance to see, all that makes mech play very viable. And now we see, so three swarm hosts just popped out for mm -hmm. the Zerg player. These are units that you're going to see move across the map and burrow and produce those locusts just as you would mentioned before. And the locusts are essentially free units. Mm -hmm. They don't cost anything. They don't cost any supply. They do live 15 seconds. They can get bumped up to 25 seconds with that special upgrade that we just saw finish up at the infestation pit. But they're excellent long-range siege weapons. And there's a swarm host popping out right now. And man, this Zerg is expanding very, very aggressively. That's right. Back down in Terran land, we can see that the Terran player is kind of ready with his siege line down here. Just as you've seen before, you always use those tanks to establish that space control. And now we have one of the 